According to the epidemiologists Richard Wilkinson and Kate Pickett, the two most important factors in determining the health and well-being of people living in industrial countries are, <laughs> this is the exam question, right? <laughs> Social status and friendships. Do you know that, that not having friendships, I mean, not having a friend that is your, who you're married to doesn't count in this calculation, is as bad as smoking? <laughs> I mean, it really is as bad for your physical health and, and it compromises longevity. Those who lack friendships or who have low social status are at greatest risk for health problems, substance abuse, and premature death, Wilkinson and Pickett report. Jim Gilligan, my husband, has similarly shown that lethal violence, meaning both homicide and suicide, are a function of social and economic inequality and has identified the mediating factors as the moral emotions of shame and guilt. So we know <coughs> that relationship and community and the values, the democratic values on equal voice and equality are effective solutions to the crisis of connection. To anyone reflecting then on the crisis of connection and possible solutions, it's striking. From the Gospels of Jesus to Pope Francis' call for a revolution of tenderness, from Albert Schweitzer and Albert Einstein to the Dalai Lama, not to mention the Beatles, the message is the same. Love is the solution. Not the selfish love that Virginia Woolf warned us against in writing about the angel in the house, that icon of feminine goodness, or the anemic love that Martin Luther King spoke of in his 1965 speech at Oberlin College, but a love that includes the self and is rooted in justice, a love grounded in a sense of human community. 